Okay, um, hey everybody, John the other here, uh, obviously, and I want to try to answer a question that's been kind of uh, picking away at my brain for a while. But probably a lot of you might also have this question, but you haven't, you know, articulated it yet, and that is, what does it mean to be woke? What is it that we're actually talking about when we say the word woke? Go get woke, go broke, or we talk about people as woke journalists or woke professors, whatever, okay? And uh, the answer, I think, comes from, well, for me anyway, the answer comes from a comment of somebody who, who disagreed with my point of view in a fairly recent video and told me I needed to go educate myself and go read my, go read some Thomas Sowell, which, okay, fair enough. Uh, and I did. And he describes thematically through a number of his books two worldviews, two competing philosophies that are not compatible with each other. And I'm going to just describe each one of them before I name them. The first one says, the first of the philosophies described by Sowell is the idea that the world is a very big place full of complexity, full of difficulty, full of uh, struggle, full of, you know, opportunities and tragedies, and that you, the person, me, the, the person, we are small, we are of limited capacity in our intelligence, we're of limited reach in our ability to influence and control our environment, we're of limited resources in terms of our financial means or other means, and that means that as you go through life you have to make choices, you make trade-offs. And this is what uh, Sowell calls the tragic vision. Uh, T Thomas Sowell calls this the tragic vision. The other vision, I mean, there's there's only two. There's there's many more, I'm sure, but we're talking about two here. Is a view that says all of the problems and difficulties and suffering in the world are simply problems that have solutions, and those solutions uh, are within the grasp of a select few, the people who have a high intelligence and high level of education and uh, I guess a, a high level of moral development or spiritual development and that people of this particular vision of the world obviously see themselves as the ones with the intelligence and the resources and the intuition and the you know the the moral rectitude to solve these problems and thus they should be the ones solving the problems for everyone else sort of philosopher kings uh, in the sense of Plato's Republic. And this is called the vision of, a, of the anointed in Sowell's language. And so what we call people who are woke, the woke journalists, woke activists, woke college, blah, blah, blah. This is whether you are a social justice warrior or a Black Lives Matter person or an Antifa person or a LGBTQ, LMNOP activist or a feminist. All of these are specific uh, flavors of the idea of the vision of the anointed. People who see that the world's full of problems, but they believe they are the intelligent, sophisticated, knowledgeable, and capable people who can solve these problems. Woke people, the anointed. And this has a couple of um, advantages for the people who believe in it. Number one is they are not wrong by definition. They are right. They're correct by definition. So that anybody who disagrees with them isn't simply a person with an alternative approach to solving that problem. They're just a person who wants to oppose the solution to that problem and therefore they're a bad person. Additionally, if you have this vision, you've attached being right to also being spiritually good. You're, you're innately a good person. That goodness is attached to your identity rather than to your conduct. And so it doesn't matter what you do, whether what you do is violent or, or helpful or compassionate or vicious, uh, you are always morally correct to do whatever it is you're doing. Now, from the point of view of an outsider, it makes people look like psychopaths. It makes them look like uh, psychotic criminals. Uh, that's what we see when we look at the activities of a lot of uh, activist groups, feminists and SJWs and Antifa and so on. But the problem, and I said those are some advantages, one of the problems of being woke or being a person of the anointed vision is that 
because you have attached being right and being moral to your identity and you've detached it from your conduct, you can't learn because you can't make mistakes. I mean, you can make mistakes. We can see you making all kinds of mistakes, but those mistakes aren't on you. The consequences of them land outside your sphere. Other people pay for your mistakes. So there is no human incentive to learn from mistakes since other people pay the price and since you've attached being right to your identity and to learn from a mistake means losing your identity as the person who's right and good. Well, that's a problem because nobody can develop as a human being unless they can be wrong. Now, it would be, you know, everything I've said is probably excruciatingly obvious to uh, pretty much most of the people watching my videos, except maybe there's some people hate watching and I hope this is at least helpful. I would suggest that you watch this video without your friends so that you're not distracted by slogans being shouted while I'm talking about any of this stuff and th that you can now think about it in your own head and apply your own intelligence to it without someone juggling your elbow. I'm not going to juggle your elbow. The second part of this video that I wanted to make, and the second part is actually a topic that I wanted to talk about for a very, very long time that I never did, and maybe it's too late now, but I'm going to say it anyway. The second part is I have for a long time wanted to say to social justice warriors, to male feminists, to, you know, uh, activists of all these different flavors, uh, don't be an ally. Don't be a male ally to feminists. Don't be a straight ally to LGBT activists. Don't be a cis ally to the same group. Don't be a white ally to uh, Black Lives Matter. Don't be a, I don't know, what would be the normal version with a, a regular non-activist person ally to Antifa. I don't, I, I don't know what that would be. Don't be an ally. And the reason is, um, being an ally, I mean, look at the language when we say an ally. Like, I don't have allies, I have friends. Like, I, honestly, I don't have allies. I don't believe in having allies. I, what I do have is friends and colleagues. And uh, ally implies that we're in a war, that that we have agreed that we're going to in a war and our relationship is predicated on being in a war and we need an enemy. But it also excludes the possibility that, that your relationship is predicated on being friends, liking each other, or cooperating. The cooperation is contingent on we have got to go fight a war. Allies, that language is telling because whoever it is you are allying yourself to actually hates you. In the case of feminists, male allies to feminists, well, female feminists hate your guts. Hate your guts. Do you understand? And they don't hate you because of anything you did. They hate you because of something that you are. <laughs> they, why would you be an ally? It's not for justice, okay? It's for social approval. It's for that little sliver of, I'm going to be okay because, look, I get a little pat on the back. Now, lots of people are going to say it's for sexual access. I guess that's a component, but I think it's more deeply for uh, human, ex you know, you want human acceptance. You want to be part of the group. Don't be an ally. The people who are giving you that provisional, as long as you carry water for us, you'll be our ally. They hate your guts. That's the video that I wanted to do and I, and I really never got around to doing it. And it kind of, it's too late to do that. Like that whole don't be an ally video is just like, we're long past that. Except I'm gonna say, don't be an ally because they hate you uh, kind of not really relevant anymore. It's more now, don't be an ally because you're going to be murdered. And I'm not kidding now. I'm not speaking hyperbolic. Of course, the social justice activist movements of all the different stripes, the Antifa and the feminists and the LGBT, there is a long history of them unpersoning people. And we're going to go after you. We're going to go talk to your employer and get you banned from your job. We're going to bar you from working in the field that you trained in, uh, you went to university for so many years and you took so much debt on, and now you don't get to work in that field because we are gonna watch you and we're gonna reach out our little whisper networks and stop you from working in any job except for like the most menial things. You disappear off the map. We wanna make sure that you're living under a bridge, not in a house. And like, that would have been a year ago, I would have said that. 
Now, though, you're an ally, uh, and we're almost in the midst of a... I mean, it looks like, to me, the beginning of a communist revolution, although it's not real communism. And the way I can tell it's not real communism is they haven't begun shooting each other in the back of the head yet to successively replace the leaders. Once they start doing that, and, and they will, then it'll be real communism. So the whole don't be an ally thing because they hate you and doesn't matter what you do, it's, an, it's a spiral, it's a death spiral of purity tests. It's no longer that you're gonna be thrown out of your job or thrown out of your university or thrown out of your profession. It's that they're gonna shoot you in the back of the head. Um, so as much as exciting as it is, as as thrilling as it is to be in the midst of these street protests and these riots and these setting up barricades and burning other people's businesses down, you know you feel like you're you're really a part of something big and historical and significant. Yes, yes, I do get it, but it's going to end with somebody putting a bullet in the back of your head. So uh, don't be an ally. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, and as always, have a lovely, lovely day. I mean, I, maybe they won't shoot you. They might, like, take a car tire and put it over your head and then fill it with gasoline.